Welcome to my audio series on revival. I believe that as you listen to this message, your life will be transformed from the inside out and you will never be the same again. There's one thing that I ask of you, beloved, is that you be a doer of this word and not just a hearer. And as the Spirit of God comes upon you, go forth and bear much fruit for Jesus. In Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 2, he says, Lord, I have heard of your flame, and I stand in awe of your deeds. O oh Lord, renew them in our day in our time make them known in wrath remember mercy so Habakkuk will say Lord I heard of your fame I stand in awe of your deeds I've seen what you've done in the past oh Lord renew them we want to see them now we want to see them now so Habakkuk was requesting for revival. He's saying, Lord, I know that you've done miracles in the past, but I want to see them today in my life. Mm. I want to experience them now. I don't want to hear what people were saying about the Azusa Street revival, but I want to see revival right here now. Amen. Mm. In Psalms it says, Will you not revive us again? that your people may rejoice in you. Show us your unfailing love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. See, the psalmist was saying, will you not revive us again? Mm -hmm. That should be our cry tonight. Lord, will you not revive us again? And the Holy Spirit would say, yes, I will revive you. Um, a man called John Kilpatrick, who was, he, he was one of the revivalists of our time, he says, revival is not church as usual. He says, revival is a ramping up of church as usual. He says, revival is an escalation of the presence of God to the point that you never experience normal church. He says, this leads me to say that once you've experienced revival, you run. Once you've experienced the presence of God to go back to church as usual, you, you're marred. You're messed up because you can never be happy. Praise the Lord. Pastor, why are you never happy? Pastor, why did you make the statement on the Friday we've prayed, but we haven't prayed? Because I've experienced higher ground. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So he says, once you've experienced revival, if you go back to, another, to an ordinary, you'll never be happy. He says, once you've had, had your feet under the table of revival, no other table will do. That's why I make it my life's business to pursue the presence of God. That's why I make my church's business to pursue the presence of God. Nothing else matters to me. That's all that matters. Revival. Amen. That's what should matter in our lives. Revival. That should be our heart's cry. Amen. We should be crying out daily nightly for revival and if we're not experiencing revival we need to be saying lord we where is it amen, amen. this is revival in its broadest sense it's a quickening presence bringing life to something spiritually dry and lifeless spiritually dry and lifeless Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know when we were singing that song, Waymaker, you know, we were just like, it's a miracle. And inside of me, I was like, I was dancing inside. Dad, is it? I'm hearing the drums. <laughs> I wanted to jump. But I'm like, 
Praise the Lord. Amen. Revival quickens you. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Revival puts such an energy in you. Even a praise and worship, Sister Shan can say, can, can testify to this. I, I say, come on, faster, faster. <laughs> when it comes to the praise, faster. Mm-hmm. Why? Because there's something bubbling on the inside. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Revival, say revival. 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 revival is a quickening presence that brings something spiritually dry and lifeless back to life. Amen. 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 We need the fire. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And many people, many Christians in, in, in England have not experienced the true fire. They have not experienced revival. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Say, say, we only... We only can bear fruit, can bear fruit according, according to, our own kind. to our own kind. So what's happening is that we are bearing fruit. We're making disciples according to our own kind. So if we are dry, and the disciples that come under us will be dry. Amen. If we are lifeless, then the ones that come in under us that get saved... They have no example but the example of lifeless people. Mm-hmm. Amen. So we're having churches growing, but growing with lifeless people. Amen. Amen. God did not call the church to be lifeless and dry. Mm-hmm. He's called the church to be a church of revival. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Uh, Tory says this. In, in the return of the church from its backsliding. So revival is the church coming back from its backsliding. Mm. Amen. Amen. So that means if you can say in 1990 or, or 2005, I remember when I used to be prayerful and I used to be always worshipping and te- coming to church on time, reading the Bible. I, I used to always have a song in my heart and you don't have it now. It means that you are backslidden. Mm. Amen. Amen. If there was once a time in your life when you had the fire and you say that was then and I don't have the fire now, it means that you are backslidden. Mm. Oh, that's serious, isn't yeah. it? It's serious because we don't think of it like we're backsliding. But we're backsliding. Amen. Finney says, a time of visitation of the Holy Spirit when he imparts new life. Praise the Lord. You know, sometimes we're going down that road. God's taking us down that road. And along that road, we start to get a little weary. And what the Holy Spirit does, he then comes upon us and gives us a fresh life. That is also revival. Praise the Lord. So all throughout your walk, you will have times of refreshing. Praise the Lord. But you should never go. But what we usually do is that we we, we run our cars until the the petrol's gone and, and then we conk out. And then we say, Lord, we're conked out. Please fill us up and, and put some more power in our battery and, and then give us a jump start so we can go. But we're supposed to be continually moving and continually being refilled. Amen. Um, it's a glimpse, even a piece of heaven on earth. Revival is a glimpse of heaven on earth. Praise the Lord. Every time you go into your prayer closet, you should have a glimpse of heaven on earth. Every time we come to church on a Sunday and we come together in worship, there should be heaven on earth. Amen. Every time we're in the presence of God together, we're praying, there should be heaven on earth. Praise the Lord. Do you know what heaven on earth is? It's the glory of God. Amen. When we come together, the glory of God should descend upon us. Amen. When the glory of God descends upon us, then we don't need to pray for the sick. We don't need to pray for deliverance. 
because God will just do it in his glory. Amen. You know, we are revived. We become a community of heaven on earth when we're revived. Praise the Lord. So what is revival? Revival is not this. Revival is not a series of evangelistic messages, although God may use these. So revival is not a a series of evangelistic messages because people can evangelize and preach and evangelists can preach and preach and preach and preach and people might get stirred up, people might repent, but still that's not revival. Amen. Revival is not religious excitement even though this might take place. Praise the Lord. Revival is not being filled with the Holy Spirit Although this, um, although this always happens during revival. Revival is not just the salvation of souls. Although this is the result of revival. Praise the Lord. Why do we need revival? Why do we need revival? Ask your neighbor, why do we need revival? Why do we need revival? Okay. Revival is necessary because we are creatures prone to laziness and lack of discipline. (laughs) Okay? Because as the theologians put it, we have a tendency to sin. Amen. So, because we are lazy... Because we lack discipline, we need revival to wake us up, to slap us, to say, hold on a minute, where I am, I've got cold. Praise the Lord. It might, say, it might be a funny analogy, but has anyone ever been in the bath and you've been in there for a long time and you don't realize that the water's gone cold? Yeah. 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 Praise the Lord. And that's, that's, the, that's like life. Sometimes you don't realize that you've gone lukewarm until it's cold. Praise the Lord. So you need revival to give you a slap on your cheek. To wake you up and say, hold on a minute. I need to get that fire back. Amen. It's our nature to stretch out in Ezekiel's Valley. Do you know what Ezekiel's Valley is? Ezekiel's Valley is the valley of dry bones. The Lord woke Ezekiel up and said, go, go to, gave him the vision and said, look at this valley. And it was a valley full of dread bo- dead bones. And he said, Ezekiel, prophesy to these dead bones. Praise the Lord. We have a, pro- uh, 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 what they call it, we have a, a, a nature. We are prone to, to be in that valley of dry bones. Praise the Lord. And the only way that we can awaken from that valley of dry bones is to, for the breath of God to breathe on us and to resurrect that, those, those dry and dead bones. Amen. 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 The only hope for this, this nature, um, this is what um, Frank Semester said. He said, the only hope for our nation is revival. Amen. And I'm going to say, the only hope... For England, for Birmingham, for Smethwick is revival. And even Canuck. Praise the Lord. The only hope is revival. John Kilpatrick again. He says revival is the only survival for our nation. Our nation. The reason why you see so many churches, even this church, all around Birmingham is because of revival. Amen. John Wesley, a great revivalist of the past. If you ever want to study somebody's life, study the life of John Wesley. He says, God does not send revival to a city. God does not send revival to a church. He does not send revival to a denomination. He sends it to a man. Amen. Amen. A church cannot manage revival 
there are too many varying opinions. A denomination cannot manage revival. It may be affected by revival, but it may be affected by revival. He says a city may be affected by a revival, but God doesn't send revival to a city. He sends it to a man or a woman. Praise the Lord. And that was John Kilpatrick, sorry. John Wesley says, I set myself. Say, I set myself. I set myself. Amen. Say it again. I set myself. Amen. I feel revival. Say it again. I set myself. Amen. He says, I set myself on fire and people come and see me burn. Amen. <laughs> Powerful. Yeah. He says, he sets himself on fire and people come and see him burn. Fire can be seen. Amen. Amen. Fire can be seen. And it can be quenched. And Naptali Semester says this, Preaching has become very motivational. To try and inspire people rather than getting people to do what the Bible says. Amen. And you find that all these, you know, somebody said to me that how comes these churches that the preacher cannot heal a fly, cannot cast out a headache, hardly speaks in tongues, goes all around every day doing his natural things, sitting down, being merry. How comes that preacher has a church of over two, three, four, five, six, seven, or even 10,000 people, whereas the pastors that are praying and fasting are struggling to keep the members in church? Praise the Lord. Why? Because people are, are going after these motivational messages that attain, you know, positive, speak positive over your life. Because when you think positive, positivity attracts to your life. And all you have to do is just, 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 just think good about yourself. Go out there and, 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 and make something of your life. God has made a, a big field for you, so go and enjoy. And come back. Praise the Lord. You see, people like that are having their churches filled. Praise the Lord. But you know what? These things is not what God intended for the church. Praise the Lord. So revival is not motivational speaking. But it is when it is about what the Bible says. Amen. He says he said to me revival is living the Bible. Simple Revival is living the Bible. It is getting back to what we are supposed to be doing. Amen. Amen. Raising the dead to prepare them to die. Praise the Lord. Because there are so many people who are dying before their time. And they need to be resurrected. Amen. Jesus said, if any man will come after me. He will take up his cross and deny himself and follow me. Not a microphone, but the cross. <laughs> Amen. Naptali semester. What happens when revival comes? There are seven common characteristics um, of revival. Praise the Lord. And this is from Wilbur Smith. He says, they often occur in a day of deep moral darkness and national depression. Deep moral darkness and national depression. We're living in a time when it is dark. Amen. Amen. We're seeing sin multiplied in the earth. We're seeing all evils happening on the news. So we can agree that we are in moral darkness. Amen. Amen. 
So that means we're ready for a revival, aren't we, saints? Amen. Amen. He says, they begin in the heart of one consecrated servant of God who becomes an energizing power behind it. The agent used of God to quicken and lead his people to faith in the obedience to him. So it starts in a consecrated heart. When your heart is clean, when you, when you give up all the sins of, the, of this world, when you give up the deeds of the flesh, God will use you as an instrument of revival. Amen. When you live a holy life, God will use you as an instrument of revival. Amen. Amen. So what does that mean? When you have sins in your life, you will struggle to catch revival. Yes. When you have sin in your life, then revival is not your portion. Revival comes through a sanctified, holy life. Yes. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Through a sanctified and holy life. He says each, each revival rests on the word of God the presence of God and prayer. So if you want to be an instrument of revival, you have to get into the word of God. Amen. If you want to get, if you want to be an instrument of revival, you have to get into the presence of God. Amen. Where does presence of God come? It comes not through the jumping and the shouting that prepares you. But the presence of God comes when you lift your hands up and you begin to extend your heart to him. And tears begin to run down, stream down your eyes. And you don't care about anyone next to you, but you are just crying and the presence of God is just on you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Do you know how many Sundays I'm at the front and, and tears are streaming? Praise the Lord. Why? Because I'm getting a refreshing when I'm at the front. Yes. Amen. Yes. Or when my heart is just welling up. Every, so, every service when worship is going on, you should be at the place where your heart is being broken. That's the time when you should be wanting to yield. Yes. But the things that stop you from yielding is sin. Yes. Jacob. Arise. Amen. Don't allow the enemy to hold you down. Praise the Lord. The only thing that can hinder that will hinder you is sin. Praise the Lord. He says, What happens when revival comes? He says, numerous lost people repent and are brought to salvation. Amen. When you are revived, your friends will want to be saved. Yes. When you're revived, the people around you will want to be saved. Yes. Amen. Amen. They'll either do two things. They'll either run to you or run away from you. <laughs> Amen. But away from you is good because it won't tempt you and, and pull you into sin. But if they're coming, running to you, it means that they're going to catch fire and their sins are going to burn off. Amen. Amen. You see, revival has, you know, when you revive, it protects you. Yes. Amen. It moves away those, those people that, that cannot sense and cannot take the light of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. What also happens in revival? Positive social change is a result. If this church becomes revived then Smedic will be changed. If Smedic is changed, then Birmingham will be changed. And it spreads just like that. Amen. How does revival spread? We may best understand how revival spreads by illustrating this form from the first and the second great awakening. 
So he's the first and the second great revival. Amen. As we do, um, as we do, note the impact of Jonathan Edwards' legacy on revival, especially through his family. So Jonathan Edwards was a revivalist. Praise the Lord. And God used Jonathan Edwards as a great revivalist. Praise the Lord. He used him in such a way that revival spread all around him. Praise the Lord. Churches became full. People left their workplaces just to come and and have church. Church was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's when there was church. People would go to work and come back to church. Revival. Praise the Lord. So what are the ingredients of revival? I want to give some of the ingredients of revival. And then we're going to come back uh, next week. And we're going to finish off um, about revival. What are the ingredients of revival? God said to Solomon, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Amen. Amen. So let's look at the first one. The first one is humility. Humility. Oh, I don't want to lift my hands up in church because... uh, you know because I don't want to that's pride because God is God and if God is God then and he's king of kings and lord of lords and he requires us to stretch our hands then we stretch our hands amen so if we're not stretching our hands or we're not engaging in the service then there's an element of pride praise the lord so if you want revival you have to have humility Humility is engaging in the things of God. Amen. If you're not engaging in the things of God, then there's an element of pride. Praise the Lord. Amen. Prayer is essential for any revival. So if you want revival, we need to start praying. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Seeking his face. What is seeking his face? Seeking his face is seeking the presence of God. Being a God chaser. One experience to the other. You know, so if you want, so the ingredients for revival is the presence of God. Without the presence of God, no revival. Number four, repentance happens when his presence convicts us. Repentance happens when his presence convicts us. Praise the Lord. So, when when his presence convicts us, we then repent. Hallelujah. So, without repentance, without a turning away from our lukewarmness, without a turning away from our dryness, without a turning away from our wicked ways, from our sins, from our all these wicked things the the things of the flesh without a turning away from them we cannot have revival in our lives so when you're hearing the message about being holy and and being right and and getting away getting getting rid of your idols all it is is getting you ready for revival but we say lord you don't want me to have fun Lord, you don't want me to enjoy life. Lord, this, this dying is too much. This crucifying is too much. Praise the Lord. Lord, I, I've given already. Why are you telling me to give again? I cannot give the last of my, my money because I need to go and buy cakes and sweets and a new dress, new lipstick. New trainers, t-shirts, coats. Amen. Amen. 
I need to look good. I need to have 10 of this and, and five of that. Praise the Lord. And God is saying, no. I want you to go catch the fire. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. Because when you catch the fire, doors open for you. Amen. You know, when you catch fire, what we were singing, Waymaker, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper, Light in the Darkness. Mm -hmm. When we have revival, that's when he becomes a Waymaker. When we begin to walk in revival, that's when we begin to see the miracle worker in our lives. Mm. Praise the Lord. When we have revival, that's when we begin to see his light in the darkness. Mm. And then we can stretch our hands and say, that is who you are. Amen. 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 The reason why the songs are not convicting us is because we're not experiencing what the songs are saying. Okay. Praise the Lord. Because if, we, if, we, if, if he was really here in our hearts, we would be singing it, saying, you are here. Yes. Looking at him, you are here. Mm. But we're like, you are here. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. So the songs are not having no impact in us because we are not living the songs. Yeah. So what are we doing? We are acting. The Bible calls that hypocrites. Is that tough? That's Don't tough. stone me. <laughs> <laughs> we are acting. Praise the Lord. God is wanting us to have revival. Amen. This, is, this should be challenging you guys. This should be really challenging you guys to a place of activation. Amen. Some of you may be whipping you. Some of you may be ouch. But that ouch is to bring about activation. The word, I hope, I pray that this word is stripping you of self, is stripping you of your idols, is stripping you of the things of the flesh, and, 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 and giving you that awakening for revival. Praise the Lord. Why live in the nature of Adam when we can live in the nature of God Almighty? Amen. Why live in the nature of sinful man when we could live in the nature of the one who was sinless? Why do we want to live in that nature? Praise the Lord. If you look at somebody in the world, praise the Lord, and, and you're looking at how they, they live and how they act and how they do things, praise the Lord. I'm not talking about their principles because the people in the world that are using God's principles and are blessed, but I'm talking about the way how they act, the way how they are. If we are looking at their character and all these things and how they are we, are, we are, we are settling for something less than the Word of God. Our character, our ways is, is, should be according to the people who are in the Word of God. There were mighty, 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 rich, rich, wealthy people in the Word of God that didn't have a mansion. Abraham lived in a tent outside, but he was a billionaire. Praise the Lord. Samson was a little, little frail man. Praise the Lord. Not too tall, not too muscular. He was just a normal frail man, but he was strong. He was the strongest man in Israel. Why? Because every time the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, he became strong. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. You know, and there's so many people in the scriptures that, you know, according to the world, according to the world, they don't qualify. But with God, they qualify. Praise the Lord. Amen. And can I tell you a secret? 
God looks for the ones who don't qualify to qualify them. Praise the Lord. So if you qualify yourself according to the world, God will pass you by. Praise the Lord. Because everything that is in the world is pride and lust. Yes. Amen. And God will not use somebody who is full of pride and full of lust. Yes. Praise the Lord. God uses people who are blank canvases. Blank canvases means that he can write his script on your life. Praise the Lord. But if you come with your, your things, your canvases, and say, now, Lord, I want you to just, there's a little square piece there. You can just put your little piece on there, your signature, and that's it. God will pass you by. Amen. God is calling us to be instruments of revival. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm going to say one more thing. Um, there is one more ingredient to revival that we should note. This is the principle of unity. We see that in Acts chapter 2, the principle of unity. Praise the Lord. After the revival in Northampton under Scotard and Edward had begun to wane, George Whitfield fanned the flames of revival again. But during this time, Edward had come to the conviction that the open communion taught by Studdard and practiced at his church was wrong. He believed that people must make a profession of faith before becoming members. Edward was concerned for what he called stony ground, hearers, people who heard of the word but soon slipped back into worldly states. However, the congregation rejected this doctrine and they were unwilling to move forward in truth and voted to remove Edward from the pulpit. At this point, the revival ended and the church and the church in Northampton. Praise the Lord. So revival, an ingredient to revival is unity. A revival started and got stronger and stronger until disunity came in. So we need unity in prayer in this church. We need unity in prayer. What does unity in prayer mean? It means that we all pray hard. We all pray loud. We don't wait for the next person to pray hard so we can jump behind them under their voice. But we all pray our own prayers towards God. Yes. Amen. Amen. It means that we all worship. Praise the Lord, even though we feel, even if we feel like it or not. Why? Because in unity, the presence of God will come down. Even if you don't want to worship, you're worshiping because you want God to come down and bless the people. Yes. Amen. There's got to be unity in, in intercession. That we're all praying for one another. Amen. There must be unity. Say unity. Amen. Unity helps revival. This unity 